Hey, MCE crew, the United States of America is an empire in decline. Now, that decline has been occurring for decades. Here recently, in the last couple of years, that decline has accelerated. And that has serious ramifications for your personal economy, for your future, and your prospects of achieving financial independence. So we're going to go over these things, some of these things that indicate this deep, deep decline in our nation. I love this country. The government sucks, okay, quite frankly, at every level, local, state, and federal, for the most part. There are some areas of the country that still respect your money, still respect your ability to uh, act in a way that is sovereign, and still respect uh, your need to be able to defend yourself and your most important form of property, which is your human body. Uh, but those places seem to be becoming uh, fewer and far -er between. So we're going to look at it again objectively and talk about what's going on in this nation. Um, there is a site, there's a uh, YouTube channel actually that I follow. I find it very interesting. It's called Nomad Capitalist. And over there, this gentleman, he owns a business that consults people who want to go to other nations where their money is treated better where their sovereignty is even treated better. Yes, better than the United States of America. I watched several of his videos and he has excellent points. Now, for me, this is my home. They're gonna need a fucking wrecking ball to take me out of here. They're gonna need to send in the National Guard a fucking SWAT team because I ain't going nowhere. But I certainly begrudge no one who makes a decision to move into a situation or to a geographic area that has more respect for them, that sees them as more than just a battery for the system, a taxpayer to be abused, okay? And there are places like that in America still, and I certainly am looking for one that suits me and my family because the state that we're living in now, um, they are, Maryland is quickly becoming California East, uh, believe it or not. And uh, we have a so-called Republican governor right now, but he's actually, um, he's one of those Mitt Romney type Republicans. Uh, what's the woman's name? Cheney, Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney, Mitt Romney, and Governor Hogan walked into a bar. There's a joke there somewhere. But let's start talking about uh, how we're watching, we're witnessing and experiencing the decline of America uh, right before our very eyes. We're in the pot of water and it's almost up to a boil, okay? Felt good to begin with, but now it's coming home to roost. Well, you all know that the United, the um, IRS, rather, has decided that they're okay being your partner in crime. We talked about that ad nauseum in several videos about how bribery, drug dealing, other criminal activity, including theft, uh, maybe armed robbery, if you stole something, anything. They don't specify how you stole it. Uh, you could have done some white collar stuff or you could have just hit someone upside the head with the butt of your nine and uh, robbed the cash register. Either way, they don't specify. They just say, look, stolen goods, whatever they may be, have to be declared on as income on your income taxes. We did the video about that and I know it's hard to believe. But that's, uh, uh, again, our nation is acting like a two-bit thug, all right, uh, with with actually um, pretty much advocating criminal activity as long as they get paid so and continue to spend trillions of dollars. Our military, finest military the world has ever seen, but we got politicians who couldn't manage their way out of a wet pa paper bag. Do not understand the sacrifices that these uh, men and women of the military go through. And that was clearly evidenced in the debacle that was our exit from Afghanistan. Here you had, in full display of the entire world, the United States of America, the great empire. And we are an empire. And I say that because even though we don't um, claim statehood in Germany or Japan... You know, we don't allow them to claim statehood. We've been over there uh, spending American taxpayer dollars forever to protect them, okay? Uh, so we are a far-flung empire in the uh, same mode as Rome was in many, many ways. So our military has been uh, treated disrespectfully. 
uh, our military is far flung. All right. Um, we're all over the place and we can no longer afford it. If you look at the national debt figures, $30 trillion, uh, and that's not counting the unfunded liabilities that take us up near $300 trillion. That's just, that's just insane. And it proves that we, uh, need to really stop the spending, get our act under control. And that would include, uh, reducing the entitlement programs that we have out there, like welfare, Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. But guess what? If you're relying on these um, entitlement programs, uh, I think what you need to do is start to set yourself up where you don't have to rely on them because you might get a rude surprise in the years to come. Okay, all that spending has led to out-of-control inflation. The government lies repeatedly with regard to the rate of inflation. The media doesn't come on and say, hey, they're saying 6%. But when you add food and energy, it's 14%. That doesn't happen. Um, so we're also seeing a creeping authoritarianism. Uh, we're seeing the government dictate. All right. We're seeing uh, the government say, you must do this. And it's not going to stop here. Uh, once the government has something, they keep on and they, they keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. They don't take anything back. Um, our government is ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, go on and watch. We did a live stream of the Supreme Court oral arguments about the OSHA mandate. And you should have heard some of these justices. You would think that these people are sitting up there in that Supreme Court and they are so intelligent and erudite. They're ignorant. They're emotional. You should have heard uh, Kagan and I forget, I think it was Breyer, vastly overestimated. It put the, put the death toll in the uh, hundreds of millions, something crazy. Okay. It was just dis distasteful that these people, that are supposed to be the so-called leaders are ignorant as hell. Okay. Uh, they're in that bubble down there in DC and um, no one can tell them anything other than what they think they know. And that makes for a bad, bad com uh, combination. So we're seeing excessive taxation at the local state and federal level. Kentucky just increased their vehicle assessment tax. Remember all that job they talked about? Oh, well, taxes are only going up for the rich. Well, Kentucky, federal taxes, let's start with Kentucky. Kentucky just uh, increased its vehicle assessment tax. Maryland just increased its property tax. So, again, I don't mind kicking our governor. Uh, he shut the state down. He made the decision to do that. that the, those states were shut down on a state level. Governors made those decisions. And now... The states are broke because they didn't ex uh, they didn't uh, accept state uh, gasoline tax because no one was going anywhere. They didn't uh, get their sales tax because everybody was in the house. They didn't get their uh, alcohol tax, okay, because the bars were closed, okay. And now they're saying, "Oh crap, we're broke. We need to raise taxes." And oh, by the way, yeah, it doesn't matter if you got that positive five days ago. Just go ahead, go to go to work, go to work because they want those income taxes. Um, so that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, there are a couple of other objective measures that we've seen. Uh, crime. Crime is out of control, and it's not going to get any better. You've got, what's his name? Uh, uh, the new DA in New York City. I don't even need to remember his name. He's like every other newly elected Democrat DA all throughout the country here in Baltimore, um, you know, uh, L.A., New Orleans, everywhere, these guys, Philadelphia, soft on crime. So crime is going to continue to accelerate in intensity, all right? It's another reason why you want to look at areas of the country, states specifically, that still take your safety as a law-abiding taxpaying citizen seriously. Uh, and a lot of these states are just not with it. Um, homelessness, Okay. Rampant. Look at L.A. Look at San Francisco. The homeless problem is just abominable. 
You've got a deeply corrupted government. Nancy Pelosi just recently gave the A-OK -okay for insider trading, as long as you're a congressman. Now, it's not good if you're Martha Stewart or if you're me, okay, or if you're you. But if you happen to get elected to Congress, then you can engage in insider trading. Someone recently uh, was asking me some questions about what, what could we do about that. Well, it's simple. Uh, there's right now a 45-day lag between Congress report, Congress members reporting what they purchased in the stock market. Make that a two-day lag, okay? Give us a fighting chance, all right? Let us in on all the information that you guys up in the Capitol Hill uh, already are well aware of. Um, so, in short, the U.S. is going to shit in a handbasket really quickly. Make sure that you are doing your due diligence to purchase assets. And I think at this point, the most important thing you can do in order to shore up your position is to really invest some time in building a business. Because, again, that's the asset class that is going to give you the highest financial returns. All right. Um, no other asset class is going to be able to give you, in terms of return on investment, the re return that um, your own well-run, well-managed business in a good field will do. Now, you can't go out there and expect to, you know, uh, do very well producing something that no one wants. That's why if you look at an industry and it's filled with, you know, people doing that, whatever it is, then that's an indicator that there's money to be had there. If you look at a business without much competition, it could be an indicator that that's not a viable business model for you to jump in and make money in an expeditious fashion. It may have merit long term, but if you're trying to make something happen to gain financial in independence rather quickly, okay, and what I mean by quickly is by 2030, 2031, then you want to start building that right now. If you've got a business, you want to reevaluate it and look for ways to uh, make it much more profitable than it already is. If you have any questions about starting a business in the financial services industry, we'd love to talk to you or the real estate industry. OK, there's money to be made and you can parlay that into other assets, other businesses to insulate yourself by building several streams of income. So when. The bottom fall, uh, finally falls out. Notice how those who are wealthy always, they always manage. And it's not about driving Ferraris, not for me or not for the people that I'm talking to. It's about being able to uh, raise your family and exist and live productively in a safe environment where your money and your sovereignty is respected. Okay, so there are things you can do. This is not all doom and gloom. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.